Hey, Jens fans, welcome to another interview of our summer series. Interview 7 brings a great guest. Not only does he serve as pastor at First Baptist in Waynesboro, but you can also come out early to home games on Sundays to hear him speak uh, to everybody involved, not just home team. He talks to the away team if they want to come in there too, as well as any fans that would like to join. Uh, but he does that as the team chaplain for Baseball Chapel. Please welcome Barrett Owen. Barrett, how are you, man? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't miss an opportunity to get you on here. First, how's that beautiful family of yours? You've got uh, two very sweet kids and, and, and a great wife to go along with it, man, and we love seeing you at the ballpark. Yeah, we're, do we're doing well. Uh, we have not been sick. We have been socially distancing. Uh, we are very, very fortunate to have a backyard, and we have taken full advantage of it. Uh, my daughter has learned to ride a bike, uh, and uh, – my son can beat me in a game of horse now. So it is, you know, we are just constantly outside and uh, it is, it's actually been wonderful to spend as much quality time with family uh, uh, over this time. Uh, but uh, working from home with kids is very hard. <laughs> so we have, we are still trying to manage that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're used to people putting the hand in the air for, for preach. I'm sure you got a few of those from home this morning as well. Uh, people oh, talk, sure. <laughs> yeah, for the, working from home with the kids, but, uh, uh, you know, you, you mentioned it working from home. How do you like doing the, the online, um, services and, and, you know, maybe is that a future thing too? Maybe not so much because you guys really do a nice job of producing, um, your services. Hannah and I, have kind of, yeah, we, uh, I, I think the church has always been trying to tiptoe into the world of marketing and, uh, and lighting and design. I mean, there's reasons why people get uh, master's level, uh, you know, uh, degrees in stage design and lighting and sound. I mean, it is, it, we have had a crash course in trying to learn how to do video production. Uh, it is not uh, for the faint of heart, uh, but I don't, the church has been kind of thrust in. We've been doing this dance, not just First Baptist, I'm talking about just kind of the global church of how do we incorporate technology? Is it good? Is it bad? And, and uh, I think for a while we, we were like, well, if you, if you have someone that's capable of doing it, it's not terrible, but don't let it become, you know, the, the whole concept of what church can be. Uh, the coronavirus has forced us to embrace it. And so the technology is our friend. We got to find a way to wrestle with it and uh, to learn it. It is a wonderful opportunity to for us to be able to spread good news God's love to people that otherwise would not be able to hear it so for us you know there's the I would say there's good and bad the good is we are I mean, we are literally reaching I mean hundreds thousands more people than we would have ever been able to uh, if we were just holding in-person worship uh, the bad to that is we don't know who they are we're not in community with them. We're not doing life with them. We don't know how to pray for their special needs. They don't they aren't investing in our life. And so it becomes kind of a, a relationship that is void of, of, of depth. Uh, and so you have to really be careful with that. It's not just about how many hits you get on social media. It's gotta, there's gotta be this constant of, you know, how are we engaging with people that we do life and community with? And so that's been the hardest part of not being physically in the room together. But I mean, it's not safe to be physically in the room. So at the other point of that is, how do you stay connected? Technology helps. Yeah, it definitely helped uh, Hannah and I. Like I said, we, we visited uh, First Baptist Waynesboro's uh, Facebook Lives there for a couple weekends in a row. And um, like I said, you guys do a, an awesome job. I know you said crash course, but you guys, again, just really, really smooth stuff. Um, but uh, we we talked a little bit before we got started, and you said you're looking at maybe towards the end of the month being back to where you can have in-person services. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it definitely. I mean, Virginia definitely is moving towards you know kind of a uh, an abbreviated opening. I mean, there's restaurants are now opening, there's parks opening now, and so we're we're paying attention to health uh, professionals, and we still want to be very mindful. The hardest part about worship is it's indoors in one room and there's an air conditioner. And that is, it breeds a, a space that is not conducive for not catching somebody else's you know, droplets or spit or, you know, and so, and we, 
On top of that, we sing in an enclosed environment with an air conditioner. So, I mean, it, you know, that's what we're being very mindful of is how can we safely worship together? So when we regather, which is looking like towards the end of the month or early July, uh, unless just something, you know, just a lot worse happens, there was a spike across the state. It looks like that'll be when we reopen. We just have to be really mindful. We won't sing congregationally yet. We'll have people on the platform singing, but they'll be socially distanced away and we'll have their own microphone. And so, you know, it's just not going to be the same. That's the hard part about reopening is it's kind of a letdown because you're, it's going to be an abbreviated service. It will not have the, it won't have a choir, won't have a full band. It'll, everything is just kind of half of what it was. We won't pass an offering plate. We won't touch each other. You have to enter in one area, exit another. You can't sit around anybody. We're roping off pews. I mean, it is, you know, what family wants to bring their three kids and tell them they have to, their kids have to remain wearing masks. They can't talk to their friends. They can't touch anything. And they have to stay on the same pew for 45 minutes. I don't see why families would come yet. (laughs) It's it's just really hard. Yeah. Uh, And so that, you know, we would just have to negotiate all of that. So not only do you have a connection with the team as being the team chaplain, but uh, you also played a college ball yourself. Now, where did you go to school? I was at Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee. And then, and I was there from 03 to 07. Nice. And what did you, what did you study while there? Were you wanting to be a pastor at that time too? Yeah, I had felt called to ministry in high school. And so I, Belmont is a, it is a liberal arts college, but has a tradition in Christian theology and, They've got a great religion department, uh, and it, it was a uh, kind of a win-win for me that I could play at that level. At the time, we were in the Atlantic Sun Conference, and I could play at that level in baseball and study religion. And so I think technically my title was a Christian leadership major with a biblical studies minor, uh, but it's just a, I mean, it's a, it's a religion degree. There you go. Okay, so that's a good deal. And then, so how did you become team chaplain? Uh, I am in uh, Rotary here in Waynesboro, at the, and, uh, and Tyler was, uh, at the time, I assume he's still in Rotary, uh, but it was coming weekly, and we were just sitting next to each other, and we were hanging out, and I just, you know, we were, I think it was the beginning of 20, the summer, but right before the summer started in 2017, uh, we were sitting next to each other, we eat lunch, we were eating lunch together weekly, and I just said, hey, y'all have any interest in someone that could just be present for, for the players that wanted to pray with them or if something happens and he jumped at it I mean it was just a casual conversation and that's that's how it started and I, I just feel like personally I know that life doesn't end just because you're living in Waynesboro for two and a half months for players I mean there's breakups and deaths and there's uncertainty and job changes and there I mean there's there's never a dull moment and look over the course of a summer for a college player. And there's a lot of emotions there. And so I just thought maybe I could help. And for those of you listening, again, when we do finally get back to playing baseball uh, Sunday evenings, but you can also catch Barrett at really uh, a few away games too. I know I see you at Stanton quite often. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're definitely present. Uh, so what will you miss most about uh, uh, the summer of this, or I guess the, the Valley League this summer? Well, I'm just going and being at the park. I mean, it is it is just a fun environment uh, just to get to see college baseball and uh, just to get to hang out with friends. And uh, also, you know, I also get to teach my kids about baseball and they're watching and they're at the age now where they're just constantly absorbing and learning. And so it's just fun. I mean, it's just a it's a night out and uh, it's a good experience and it's it's worth everyone's time to go out and support and to have a good time and sit on the hill and go chase, watch your kids chase down foul balls and then cheer on your team. It's fun. So you also just started keeping players as well. How was that experience? Oh man, we loved it. I mean, we, you know, we're, our house is conducive for it. We have a bedroom in the basement and it's a finished basement. So that there's a, there's a physical separation that if the player wants to separate from our kids or from us, he can. Uh, but then also, you know, it, it just had, it. you know, it was just, a, we were very fortunate because, I mean, the guy, we had two guys last summer uh, at different times. And uh, the first one got hurt and left. And then had another one come in and take his place. And both of them just 
I mean, uh, highly mature for their age, uh, very respect. Uh, they respected our, you know, kind of family rules and our kind of our way of life. And they didn't get in the way. They jumped in. Uh, and it was, I mean, I, we, we loved it. I mean, it was just kind of a no brainer for us. Our life was just kind of conducive to be able to, to support the organization in that way and to help a college student. And I've been there. I know what it was like. And uh, my brother was a professional baseball player when he was in college. He did stuff like this. And, uh, and it, you know, it can make or break a summer if you've got someone that is, uh, you know, just creating a safe space for you to, uh, as a player, to just come home to, and that it, it not creating like this tense environment when you're not on the field. There's so much pressure for players when they're on the field, just to be able to come home to a safe environment that supports them and gives them encouragement. We wanted to be able to offer that. Okay. So, and I know you didn't, uh, I know you didn't get prepped on this one, so it might be throwing you into the fire a little bit. But uh, do you have a favorite memory of uh, of a Valley League game, even if it's just uh, uh, as a fan, as as a team chaplain, whatever you uh, whatever you got? Uh, yeah, I mean, it is. I think there there's a couple of games where last summer, I mean, we really went on a streak uh, really towards the beginning of July, and we won a lot of games in a row. And it was just kind of fun to see the drama of that happen. I think there was one particular game where we were down like three runs going into the, into the ninth inning, and we came back and won. Mm -hmm. And just like, you know, moments like that, that's what you live for. It's fun. Like, you know, it's the, the pageantry of it all. And so that's I would just say probably that consistent run, it's like a two-week run of where we just didn't lose. It was yeah. super fun. Yeah, I think we won, oh, something crazy, like 13 or 14, yeah. 15 games. And uh, the game and that – how we won. Yeah, I remember the game that you're talking about specifically. We had a three-run home run from Joey Kinker to, to put us that's on right. top. Yeah. yeah, that's that right. At Stanton, that was a, a wild finish. And we had just – so that was the second night. The, the night before that, we had deleted like a – Oh, it was something crazy there too. It was like eight runs in the last two innings or something, something nuts uh, against Woodstock at home. But uh, yeah, definitely a good memory there. But again, Barrett, thank you for taking the time out of your day to do this. I know uh, you got kids running around and uh, I'm sure they're ready to have dad back having fun again. Um, uh, but a huge thank you, not only for taking the time out of your day, but for all that you do for us at the, at the Waynesboro Generals. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. I would, honored to be part of the serve in, in the way that I do. It's uh, it is low hanging fruit for me, and uh, I'm proud of uh, the way it supports Waynesboro. Awesome, Barrett. Well, thanks again, man. All right, man. Have a good day. You too.